uh, in 2012, when the plan was renewed, uh, they began to realize the uh, the extent of the problem in much more detail than they had in 2007. A lot more research had gone into it. There was a lot more attention, really, as a result of Louisiana and the, and the floods of, of the storms of 2005. A lot more attention being paid to the impact of climate uh, and climate change on things like wetlands. Sea level rise got recognized as a, as a major problem. Hurricane Sandy, Superstorm Sandy, had hit New Jersey in the meantime. And uh, so that had uh, created some uh, additional awareness. So there are larger forces at work than just oil and gas pipelines, not, you know, not having free flow of the Mississippi River Delta into the wetlands to, to restore them. Um, but the price tag in 2012 was, was $50 billion, and the price tag in 2017 is $50 billion. Uh, I, I attended a meeting last week in Baton Rouge of the uh, Senate uh, Select Committee on uh, Coastal Preservation, and re Coastal Restoration and Flood Protection, where uh, Johnny Bradbury, who's the director of the CPRA, and Bren Haas, who's their chief of research, were there presenting as a two, um, that's this thing's going over my computer, sorry. Sure, no problem. Re representing to uh, this committee th their plan. And b b before they could really get into their plan, Senator Brett Allen of Franklin said, well, wait, first let's talk about the money. You say you got a $50 billion plan. How much money do you actually have? And so he, uh, Bradbury went through it. He worked through a list. The, you know, the state's getting a good chunk of money out of the BP settlement. Uh, part of it because we have a plan. The master plan is in effect paying for itself already, but because we are going to be able to move first before the other Gulf states by figuring out how we can put some of this money together. It gives us a competitive advantage, how we can put this money to work. It gives us a competitive advantage. So Bradbury works through this list. And ultimately what you end up with is that, that uh, we're going to get maybe eight or nine billion dollars from the BP cell. And then you have some continuous streams of money, Bro Act money, uh, the money that uh, Mary Landrieu and Bobby Jindal got increased royalties for offshore development, Go Mesa, I think it's called, uh, that, that are, that, that are going to kick in, that are kicking in and are going to be in place for a long time. Well, those are the only funds you can count on. And the combination of the BP money and this these other federal revenue streams adds up to about $19 billion. So as Bradbury told the committee, we're about 30 billion short. Now, <laughs> they, when they started this year's, uh, the, the, the planning for this cycle, which really starts immediately after a plan is adopted, they start looking at things, they have an annual plan. They, uh, when they started this year, the, the evaluation for this plan, they had over 200 projects on the books. 124 made it into their first draft of the final plan. And what they did the other day, the day after this committee meeting, I think it was last uh, Thursday, they added four more projects. They didn't add more money. They added four more projects. Some of them are in this area. Some of them, uh, there's a, a Vermilion Bay project involving uh, Iberia and Vermilion Parish. There's some coastline in Cameron Parish. Uh, some swamp, some wetlands re uh, development in Terrebonne Parish. Uh, but but here's the thing, we don't have the money uh, to do this, and th this is where we're stuck. And so if you step back, you figure, what are the other possible sources of money? And Bradbury was asked this. And uh, so the federal government is a potential source of money. Uh, I, I had uh, uh, Rob Manis on my show a few weeks ago. Rob and I don't agree on much. We started talking about coastal restoration. He thinks the federal government has an obligation, and he, he believes that that conservatives should be from Louisiana should be arguing to get the federal government involved in this. And this is consistent with the idea that if you go back to first use and the, and the quell tax, that the rest of the country has benefited from these activities that have harmed us and that in, in effect, they owe us a debt. And uh, so uh, Manus believes that the, that the federal government should have a role to play in this. And certainly John Bell Edwards, the Edwards administration, the state has long believed in the, that the federal government should help us. Uh, uh, America's Wetlands, uh, that the NGO, America's Wetlands, is a firm believer in the idea that, that uh, federal national taxpayers should help us restore our coast. Uh, naturally, the, the oil and gas companies are the biggest supporters of America's Wetlands. But again, there, there is 
a constituency uh, with some national reach that believes that the federal government has an obligation to Louisiana uh, to help us with this coastal restoration plan. Because ultimately, uh, restoring our coast, if we don't, it, 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 the, the forces that are at work right now, climate change, sea level rise, land subsidence, these are existential threats to, to South Louisiana. You saw the story the other day, I'm sure, 500,000 people in the, in the New Orleans area could be displaced by climate change. I mean, this is, this is real stuff. I, the, the sources of it don't really matter. It's real. It's happening. And it's, we are, in effect, the canary in the coal mine here. And the reason this is going to be so traumatic for Louisiana is that we have probably the deepest attachment to place of any people anywhere else in the country. Uh, I saw some statistics the other day that only New York State has a higher percentage of their residents native to the state. But Louisiana has the highest percentage of people who live within 50 to 100 miles of where they were born. When you, when you, when you look at South Louisiana, you're looking at 2 million people, really extending from St. Tammany, uh, the Pearl River, over, you know, all the way over to Cameron, 2 million people in the coastal zone. This is, this is what's disappearing. And we're going to have to make, and this came out of the Senate meeting last week, you know, we have hard choices to make. And this article that I wrote for the Independent on, on that meeting was, uh, really, what the Coastal Master Plan is about is deciding who we're going to save and who we're going to leave behind. The communities that we don't save are people that are, that are going to have to move. And uh, so that's that's what this really is all about. And, uh, you know, we, we have some, we have... The last thing I want to say that we can, we can continue the conversation is that the, the coastal zone lawsuits that the governor has been encouraging the parishes in the coastal zone to sue uh, oil and gas companies for their development are a major part of this. Because if you're going to cobble together $50 billion, and we say we got 19 and you need $50 billion, well, you know, it's, it, it works in two ways. If, we, if we're going to go ask the federal government to help us, we're going to have, they're going to say, well, what are you doing to help yourself? Well, so part of that is, well, we've, you know, we're using the BP money wisely and we're, we're making it work. We have this great plan. Uh, but we're not, you know, the consistent thread going back to the first use tax and the quail tax and America's wetlands is Louisiana is not willing to try to make the oil and gas industry accept their responsibility. Uh, when John Barry was, uh, you know, was on the uh, Southeast Flood, Louisiana Flood Protection Levy Authority, uh, you know, what, uh, that was the first time anyone had tried to hold the oil and gas industry responsible for, the, for their damage to the coast. As he pointed out, you know, almost every time he talked, there are multiple studies that the industry participated in on coastal wetlands loss that show that the industry bears some responsibility. It varies from place to place on the coast, the amount of activity, but they have responsibility. And the problem that not going after them, not trying to bring them to the table creates is that it undermines our credibility if we're going to go ask the federal government, you know, to come up with a big chunk of money.